Hey kids, Grandpa here. <clears throat> Found a uh, interesting boat and an interesting story while doing some search on the internet today. And uh, I wanted to share that with you all. So if you would bear with me here for a little bit on this kind of video presentation. But um, I wanted to show you a, kind of what a real boat looks like. And what I mean by a real boat is this. I recently found out about Charlie Simon. This fella is a pretty interesting sailor. Been sailing around the world, as you can see by this path here shown on his map. Uh, Charlie has just right now arrived up here in Alaska. He's actually right there off the tip of the Gulf of Alaska after having completed the Northwest Passage. That's right. He sailed around the Northwest Passage. Now, I know there's some other YouTube creator ch uh, channels talking about doing that in the near future. So I thought it'd be timely to kind of bring this up right now. Um, Charlie is a former uh, Microsoft program manager with a degree in electrical engineering from UC Davis. Uh, Well-known sailor, been sailing for many, many years. Him and his wife, uh, a few years ago, bought a... 1994 Taswell 58. This is a, a sister ship to his that's currently for sale in Croatia. Um, this is a boat made in Taiwan. Let's look at the specs. It's made by Ta Ching in Taiwan, a Bill Dixon design. Bill's currently designing some boats for some other manufacturers uh, like Tiana. She's uh, 58 feet long. 16 feet wide and has a draft of about seven feet, 9,000 kilograms of ballast. So uh, quite a lot of weight. What's interesting is 140 horsepower. But what really sets her apart as being a worldwide ocean cruiser, I mean, guys, this is the real machine, is 2,720 liters of, of fresh water on board in tanks. Now, that's 718 gallons for us Americans, and 350 gallons, or 1,320 liters of fuel. This boat is designed to cross oceans and keep everybody warm and comfortable while they're inside the boat. And talking about the inside, let's take a little bit of a, a gander at the interior. So you can see she is uh, well-appointed, um, well-designed. I Personally, I love this like little seating area here, a great little conversation pit, if you will. Um, really nice bedroom set up in it. Um, here's the layout of the boat. You can see there's the master bedroom back here. There's this little seating pit with a couch on this side. There's some additional bunks storage and, and a bunk up in the V-berth. So you got a head here, you got a head here, you got a head here. So it's basically a, a sort of a three cabin, three head layout. Um, and a fin keel, which I was surprised at. She's not a big full keel boat. She's just a fin keel with a folding down swim platform on the back, which of course that kind of got me thinking. So this is sort of, you know, my idea of the kind of boat I would like to eventually get into. Um, if I had, you know, well, if I had, you know, $350,000 maybe. Uh, but still, pretty decent boat. And why I'm saying is it's a decent boat is you can read about uh, Charlie Simon here on his website, World Sailing Guru, about his recent circumnavigation. So let me kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So here we are on uh, Venture Sky, back out a little bit, and um, here's what old Charlie did. Charlie started down here in Florida. This is all wind speed here. Sorry about the, the little icon there, but he sailed from Florida up the East Coast around over to here uh, to Greenland, um, up and across through here, down through a little tight channel there down and then across this area. Let me switch over to a Google Earth view. It might be a little easier to understand. So he sailed up around. He came over to about here in Greenland, came across, down through here, 
down through this area, down through this little narrow area, and then on and around. And now he's currently out here in um, uh, in Alaska. Now, to give you an idea how far north this is, some of you guys have, may have read about the, uh, the all the polar bears that are up in that area. Well, the town that's known as the polar bear town is all the way down here, Churchill. So we are substantially up north of that. In fact, this is absolutely polar bear territory up here. And so uh, when you sail that area, it's really highly recommended that you carry a gun with you. Um, there are some, some not really ocean crossings, but certainly some sea crossings. But what you see up here is a lack of any towns or villages. Okay, there's no big metropolitan areas. There's no population base. Uh, there's some industrial ports up there for the mining operations and oil operations going on, uh, some commercial kind of stuff. But, you know, there's there's very few places in here to get fuel. And so when we look at his route, I'm just going to go ahead and stick this over here. We're going to look at path. And even if we start from, you know, about where he was here, you know, you, you come around and you realize the route that he sailed. And you start thinking about the distance and you understand why it is that someone like him needs to have a boat that can travel 4,000 miles. Let me put that in nautical miles. There we go. 3,553 nautical miles. Um. Now, there are some places he was able to get fuel along the way, but you really need a boat that's got this kind of capability uh, to go those kind of distances between ports. And um, some of the more modern boats just really don't have, I think, what it takes to do that. Now, I want to point out, now this is the weather today. And of course, in the summertime, these weather patterns are somewhat different. Um, but you've got good wind coming down here. You've got good wind coming across top of Alaska. I might point out, guys, there's a little, you know, storm up here around Alaska. And to give you an idea of the size, from here to here on that storm is about 1,200 miles. Yes, that's right, 1,200 miles. Something, uh, what, two and a half times the size of Irma. And we get these storms coming in from the Gulf, uh, coming up into Alaska all the time. Uh, we don't get the severe high winds, although I think this one's got, yeah, it's got 50, 50, 53 mile an hour winds in it. So while I'm just here, I can't help but uh, stop and point out, look at the Southern Ocean. Look at all the activity down in there, all the high winds and stuff. Man, I would not want to be in the Southern Ocean this time of year. That's just nasty. And even though we still have uh, Jose messing around out in the Atlantic, we also have some activity going on over in the Pacific. And these storms should come in and be hitting into uh, into Mexico. These storms tend to move the direction towards land there, just like these move across. Looks like there's something else whipping up out here off of Africa as well. If we can kind of zoom in a little bit there, you can see more of what I'm talking about. That's the remnants of Jose. See, he's got 30, 40, 60 mile an hour wind, 61. There's two storms out in the Pacific. But I digress. So. Anyhow, I wanted to touch base with you guys. You can get on YouTube. You can do some research about the Tazewell 68. Learn more about this boat. It was the 1994 Sailing Yacht of the Year. And you can get on Facebook and you can read about old Charlie Simon and the route that he took. He started down here in Florida and came up here to Greenland and then went up over the top. Guys, this is a serious sail. I mean, this is a serious sail where you're really in in very remote locations now he just now got into oh come on my mouse is behaving poorly look he just now got into uh um the gulf of alaska he just posted this as you can see there four hours ago and um there they were arriving in king cove alaska 22 hours ago and here they were on July 10th, uh, they were in Greenland. So it took them from July 10th to September 15th to do that Northwest Passage. 
July 10th, July 10th to September 15th. Pretty amazing. Awful long time to be out of contact with everybody. So anyhow, you might want to read more about uh, SV Celebrate and their adventures. There's their sale blog page. You can do a search for SV Celebrate and it'll bring this up and it'll show, you know, the map of the places that they've been to and where they are now. And you can see here it shows a little cross right there where they are in uh, King Cove, Alaska. Um, so he's got uh, the sale blogs. You can you can see stuff on his Facebook page. You can go to his website and do some research. Unfortunately, he doesn't have anything on YouTube to watch, uh, but there is some stuff there. You can do more research on the yacht. Um, I don't know if this one is set up the same as his is, uh, but you can do some more research on the on this Ta Ching Taiwan built 58 foot uh, Taswell. Very interesting boat. Very interesting indeed. So anyhow, I just there I am. I just thought I should uh, let you guys check that out and see what that looks like. I thought you might find it interesting and um, and see what it looks like. So anyhow, if you like this kind of thing, please do like and subscribe. I'm going to try to bring you more information, interesting stories like uh, Charlie and his uh, Northwest Passage and what's going on. So please do like and subscribe. Check out our Patreon page. And uh, hopefully we'll get the farm up here in Alaska sold and be out sailing ourselves here pretty soon. So anyhow, this is old grandpa signing off. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.